Welcome back to Healthcare Consumerism Radio. This is uh, Brent Macy and Doug Field here with uh, the next segment of Healthcare Consumerism Radio. And joining us is Alyssa Gavrilescu from Solstice Marketplace. Welcome, Alyssa. Welcome, and thanks for getting my name right. That's pretty impressive. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> he did good, didn't he? <laughs> I worked all morning trying to make sure I got that right. But uh, welcome to the program. And I, I know, uh, you know, we just had Terry McCorvey on with uh, Allegis Technologies on the in the private exchange market, and you guys are in the private exchange market, and it's big, big business and a hot topic. Kind of give us give our audience kind of a feel for you know who Solstice is, and and we'll dig a little deeper in the segment. Well, Great. Well, I'm certainly excited to be here. Um, Solstice, we started as a dental and vision ancillary benefits insurance company. And, um, you know, due to the emergence of healthcare reform, we certainly saw the benefit of providing a marketplace and a private exchange uh, for our customers, both on the broker and on the group side. Um, we created our private exchange, which is called the Solstice Marketplace, uh, earlier this year. And uh, we rolled it out at Sherman and Ehu, um a couple of months ago. And we're excited to see the feedback, um, you know, for the features and the tools that we've built. It's pretty exciting. Hey, uh Alyssa, this is Doug, and good morning to you. Um, what is your model? What, what is your exchange model? Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, our exchange was originally created to be broker-centric. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we've seen a lot of exchanges that touch on the group or employer needs, mm-hmm. but um, we really created ours to be focused on the broker, to understand their business, and to help mm-hmm. keep them competitive um, throughout healthcare reform and to create value for them with their clients. Mm-hmm. Now, the the you know, in the last segment, also we had Terry talk about the the brokers and and some of the the things that they were doing with brokers you know for the for the brokers that you talk to what is their appetite for for having a private exchange offering that they can then turn to their employer clients and offer we were really shocked at how receptive the brokers were um, to the product. Um, you know, ours is unique in, in the sense that it does provide the brokers the opportunity to co-brand it and to make it their own, mm. um, as well as providing a lot of really cool tools for the groups and the employers, educational material mm-hmm. and uh, items to really help the, the clients through the enrollment process. So they really were receptive to that model and the fact that it, it really spoke to both the brokers and to the employers' needs. Uh, uh- Alyssa, is it a group and or individual product model? It sure is. Um, the brokers have the ability to upload their okay. groups, their carriers, and their plans to the system. From there, they upload their clients and create an open enrollment process. Mm-hmm. The clients then have open enrollment for all their benefits. There's a cost calculator, educational tools, and all the things that the uh, employers and the employees will need to conduct their open enrollment. Mm-hmm. Alyssa, you, you uh, obviously are, are coming at this from uh, the ancillary supplemental health mm-hmm. uh, background. So, you know, I'm going to make an assumption with the statement. So you, you, you truly see the well-rounded experience that brokers need to apply, uh, uh, you know, supply to their employers going beyond major medical to include those supplemental health choices. Correct? Absolutely. That was, that, you know, I, we really, we really feel that way. Um, you know, it's not just about medical anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, we really feel now throughout health care reform that ancillary benefits do, um, you know, create an additional competitive advantage for brokers um, and that having a well-rounded product portfolio for the brokers is really important for your clients. Now, with that, Elizabeth, the well-rounded, you know, options in there is is that one of the things that if i'm if i'm an employer or if i'm a broker who's looking to to represent a certain exchange is that what i'm looking for am i looking for what's the most robust option out there or am i looking for functionality am i looking for for both of those options what what should i be paying attention to well i I think a little bit of everything you're going to want a system that provides a high level of service and tools and features for both the broker and the group and employee side. We've seen some exchanges that can be pretty one-sided. They have some great tools for the customer, but they don't really factor in the broker relationship or conversely, those that are for the broker, but they don't provide much in the way of customer support and enrollment educational tools, which ultimately drive the group and employee satisfaction. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to find a balanced platform, one that supports the broker relationship, which I think is critical, Mm -hmm. and that provides tools for HR and employees to manage their benefits and answer the many questions they'll have during open enrollment. Now, are you guys, do you, um, can you represent, 
is there a certain employee life size that you prefer to work with, or, or can you work small, medium, large employers? Our platform um, supp uh, supports all group sizes, and what's really unique about ours is that we allow the brokers to upload their own carrier plans and custom mm -hmm. plans that they may already have a relationship with a certain carrier, okay. or they can select from our standard plan. So we have relationships with insurance companies, and you know they don't just have to use um, one carrier's plan. How are you helping uh, your brokers and employers um, uh, understand how private and public exchanges may work together. You know, I mean, there's a lot of uh, confusion there around your, uh, the, the subsidized employees and how employers and their brokers will, will work to manage those lives in conjunction with those that are for the private exchange. You know, I think um, the educational tools are really important, and just educating the brokers and their clients, I think that really helps them. With, you know, the ACA, we're seeing so many laws and changes on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's just keeping your finger on the pulse and informing mm -hmm. them so that they're informed as to how their business is shifting and so that they can then be consultative to their clients. Mm -hmm. Now, I know with the, Alyssa, with the ACA, you know, a lot of the, probably your, your traditional business, the, the ancillary benefits, that really sat on the outside of ACA and wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. affected too much. What do you see within ACA um, that, that might affect private exchanges in a, in a good or bad way? Well, I, I really still believe that employer groups are going to continue to retain and attract top talent through their mm -hmm. benefit offerings. Um, over 90% of large employers offer dental coverage, and that number continues to rise year after year. I firmly believe that ancillary benefits will play a key role in the employee compensation package. I think brokers can create a powerful proposal for their clients by offering dental benefits and dental coverage because it remains the employee's most desired benefit after medical coverage. Um, to speak to what you asked about ACA, you know, they do require the pediatric dental essential health benefit, um, but that can also be fulfilled by a standalone dental plan, such as our dental plans, um, as they do meet that EHB. Mm -hmm. I see that um, some medical plans can embed the pediatric dental EHB, but it doesn't cover adults, and even those who are looking for a plan for their children may want to consider fulfilling that pediatric EHB with a true family standalone dental plan. Mm -hmm. They'll most likely get, you know, a more robust plan and definitely more bang for their money with features such as ortho and periodontal care. Mm -hmm. How does the private exchange uh, uh, market uh, via brokers uh, impact a broker's uh, compensation uh, package? I think the – did you say the private exchange? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm a broker working at the private exchange. Mm -hmm. Does it, you know, is it, you know what impact is it going to have or not on my commission model? I think a lot of the private exchanges, at least the ones that are broker-centric, mm -hmm. like ours, are really factoring the broker and their business, mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, to help them uh, remain competitive and keep that source of income. Um, we certainly created ours to account for broker commissions and to account for um, you know, their compensation to ensure that they have a sustainable business model throughout healthcare reform. Yes, yeah, so that's a big education part on your behalf uh, to brokers because I think there's a confusion factor out there with many brokers that really don't understand that right now. Yeah. Alyssa, I think, you know, if, if you look at – if you were to look into your crystal ball and, and look out to 2015, 2016, you know, what, what do you see uh, the private exchange marketplace looking like? Um, you know, I, I do think there's going to be – and I've heard some debate as to whether or not it's going to shift to a more business-to-consumer or business-to-business -business mm -hmm. model. Um, you know, there's some healthy debate on that topic. But I think regardless of what side you stand on, the reality is, is that employees are going to be making benefits decisions very soon. And they'll likely take the driver's seat in selecting the right products for their needs, starting with the carrier down to the plan. And both brokers and employers alike are definitely going to need to start offering more educational tools and support to assist the enrollees with these decisions. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a broker or an employer, the benefits of offering that support will lead to increased employee and client satisfaction, and I believe there's certainly a tangible value to that. Now, the, when, you, when you look at inside of your, you know, exchange, do you, are you guys getting RFPs from solution providers who wish to be inside your exchange? What's, how does that process kind of work? Are you, do you go source the solutions that are going to sit in, inside your exchange, or, or is somebody coming to you to... We've had... We've actually had a little bit of both. Um, when we were first developing our exchange and going through the data collection phase and figuring out how we wanted to structure it, um, we certainly reached out to carriers um, who we wanted to, to partner with to be on our exchange. Um, and recently, when we went to some of these trade shows to launch the product, um, we, we were approached by several other partners and vendors who wanted to embed 
certain aspects of their um, business into our exchange. So, so it's so part of you know, I mean, there's a lot of movement with transparency. You know, I mean, to have ultimate consumerism, you've got to have transparency mm -hmm. in the system, and there are um, some very you know uh, strong emerging transparency players. Do, are you including a transparency solutions as, as part of your exchange experience? Um, I, I do believe that um, consumers want the transparency, especially with healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, I was just reading a Washington Post article yesterday, and it had a it cited a Carnegie Mellon study, and it found that only 14 percent of the participants actually understood basic insurance features such as deductibles, copays, and coinsurance. Mm -hmm. And these are the people that considered themselves the primary or even secondary healthcare decision makers in the family. As consumers were really in tune as to what's important when making online purchasing decisions, when you buy a car, you know the features that you want, you understand what you're buying, and as consumers, mm -hmm. we're really not that savvy when it comes to selecting health care and insurance products. And that's where I think that transparency uh, comes into play, um, you know, especially with the emergence of private and public exchanges. Many individuals are being moved from that handheld, mm -hmm. consultative open enrollment experience with a broker or HR to support them. And now they're having to make these decisions in a self-directed manner. And um, they're really used to having that support. So I think um, providing solutions like we have, such as educational videos and tools and creating mm -hmm. a very um, health literate website, uh, is really key to creating that transparency and making the customer feel like they understand what they're choosing and they feel empowered to make those decisions themselves. What do you see uh, wellness as part of any, uh, an exchange environment or not? You know, I, there's a lot of um, data out right now that's showing the impact of every aspect of health, whether mm -hmm. it's the oral health correlation to heart health and diabetes, to um, you know how all of these medical plans tie into one another, and I think that's important. I think wellness um, and, and having the consumer understand that it's not just a medical plan, not just a dental plan, mm -hmm. but it's overall health and how each of those fits into that um, will really help them make um, a, a more educated decision for their family. Now, Alyssa, the you know, we we got a couple of minutes remaining on the program. Kind of what are what are one or two takeaways that you can provide to our audience on if, if I'm looking at an exchange, if I'm an employer or if I'm a broker out there, what are what are the takeaways that, that I really need to know? Um, I think it's important to you know to find a balanced platform, one that su supports both the broker relationship, which I think is critical, and as well as one for um, HR and employees to manage their benefits. Um, of course, data and security is critical, um, so partnering and aligning with you know, a company that understands HIPAA regulations and securities. As an insurance carrier, you know, we're governed by all the state and federal regulations, so our exchange was built with some of those features already. Uh, you know, they're naturally programmed into us. Um, but I think for the consumer side, I think educational tools are key. Um, I do believe in creating an authentic and human online experience, especially when you're being moved from that very personalized uh, experience to an online platform. You want a system that provides you with the tools to make the decisions comfortably and present it in a manner that is relatable and understandable to most consumers. And and to, to end here, um, can you kind of give, what's, what is uh, the website the audience can find you guys at? It's www.solsticemarketplace.com. All right, Alyssa. Well, we, we really appreciate you having you on the program this morning and, and have yep. a wonderful weekend. Uh, to the rest of our audience, stay tuned for the next segment of Healthcare Consumerism Radio.